that's how easily Nokanarf was able to kill all those Dryads. And it's interesting because the main counter to the strategy is basically mass Dryads. But I mean, with one, they're gonna take at least one full wave of fire running up to you, and if he's gonna, if he's gonna make more, even more mortars. So, I mean, think about it. It's a lot of. It, it's gonna cost them money and scrolls even to keep the Dryads alive for more than a bit. Okay, so once Noknarf won this fight, he's going to apply some pressure. And I don't I don't really know how he saw this panda here. Like did he dust or or what? Oh, he used he used the reveal and the mortars, I see. So basically he's applying pressure to the night elf player right now, which really good call cuz while he can't defeat the night elf player by any means right now, he most certainly, most certainly can at least, like, you know, slow him down or just keep him away from this expansion while it's being built. He's going to scout it eventually. It's That's pretty much undeniable. And it's pretty much undeniable that, like, he's not going to be able to stop it. <laughs> Nilk has an almost 80 food army, and if... Sasuke were to take his whole army over there and try and cancel that expansion with Nilk's army in, in the presence. I doubt anything good would come of it for Sase. Simply because his army is... I think it might even be smaller. Yeah, it's like eight, eight food smaller. And it's just Nilk's army is better right now. Okay, so the first thing he has to do in this fight is focus on Hippogriff Riders, which is the natural counter to Griffins. So, he focuses down the Hippogriff Riders, and now he's available to focus the Bears. After these first couple Breath of Fires go off from the Panda, he uses a Healing Scroll, and he TPs out. I think it's really interesting how uh, smart Nilk's TPs are, TPs are. He killed a couple Griffins. I think he may maybe even lost one Mortar, I'm not sure. He might have lost one. But, he lost a Mortar, let's say, and maybe lost one Griffin from the Hippogriff Riders. And the interesting part about that is he took down those Hippogriff Riders and he killed a couple Dryads from the Mortars. I'd say that that was a very successful fight for Nilk, even if it cost him a TP. Because not only did that fight serve an amazing purpose, which is setting up a second expansion, it allowed him to gain an even larger uh, game advantage with units and army size. And right now he basically, what Nilk nerf needs is a level 3 Paladin and a level 3 Mountain King. And that would sort of seal the game. He once your Archmage Like once your Archmage is about level four ish, you probably shouldn't be creeping it with your M MK and Paladin. I guess in this case Nilk didn't really care. And I think Nilk I'm Nilk as a player tends to get kinda cocky sometimes, like as far as his playstyle. I've seen him lose some games where I was like, Man, you're winning, but it's not over yet, but Nilk's like, Man, it's so over and then he just gets his whole army raped. So again, that's one thing that you should never do, whether you're pro or a noob. Never underestimate your opponent. Like, I remember back in the day when I played StarCraft, it was always like, you know, even if you're winning, if you're killing their last building, you're setting up more expansions and like you're producing more units, etc. So that applies here. No matter what, always be producing units, setting up expansions, doing all the things you normally would be do if you were losing or winning. Okay. So in this fight, he did Nilk built a couple dragon hawks, which was really smart. And the cool thing that's going on here, I thought, is that like while Sase did run back and like basically own these mortars, he ended up losing bears and he ended up getting all his dryads low HP. Right now, Sase is in no position to make a push at Nilknarf. Nilknarf basically has his full army of griffins and he's gonna produce some more mortars, which aren't that expensive in comparison to bears, which are a lot more lumber and a lot more uh, wood to produce. So Sase has these five units, six, what does he have? He has like six units to his name, like small army. He basically just got totally worked over by Nilk. And even though Nilk was the one who was forced to TP, he definitely won the fight. If you notice, Nilk just used his flare to scout out the expansion in the lower left hand corner to make sure Sase isn't trying to pull anything funny. Because with mortars and griffins, he does have amazing hauling potential and he is very, very easily capable of killing any sort of extra expansions that Sase is beginning to set up simply because of his mortars and his scouting capabilities right now. 
Sassy uprooted his Ancient of Wind, by the way, and put it in the middle of the map, just as a scout, I'm pretty sure. There's no particular reason to do that. And he's going to be losing his main tree right now. When shit like this happens, the Night Elf player usually says GG. Like, that is one of the worst things that can happen to a Night Elf player. And it's it's no good. That's <laughs> It was way risky, way ballsy of Sassy to try and, when he had such a massive army disadvantage, to even attempt to uproot his main tree and send it over. Okay, so right now, all he has is some bears versus this Kafilian food army of griffins. And Nilk has, is, does go over 80 food a bit. Now he isn't right now, but he did before. And basically, if you notice, like, just how smart Nilk's playing, he's sort of just, I don't know, he has this huge army advantage. He doesn't really need to push. <gasps> he doesn't really need to play the super mega aggressor. And he's, again, he's going to be very safe. He's going to get healing scrolls and stock up his items. And he's going to go into high upkeep and just make sure that there's absolutely no chance on this planet that he's going to be losing this game. I mean, while this does buy Sase a bit of time, Sase is only running on one gold mine, but albeit he's on low upkeep, the game isn't totally over. He has a level 7 panda. The game isn't totally over, and Sase basically is just chilling out trying to get an army of Hippogriff Dryad which is essentially going to do nothing considering he has Dehawk Griffin Mortar which totally kicks the shit out of the 9 elf player at this point in the game and again Nilk using excellent use of the Mortar's Scout Flare it does help a lot you can if you can use that Scout Flare like I mean I always usually even when I know what's going on in the game, I'll just like, if I have like five or six mortars, like I would if I was doing this strategy, I'll just scout the entire map and I'll make sure everything is, everything's looking good, you know? There's no reason not to. I mean, I don't even think it costs mana. It just, yeah, it doesn't cost mana. It just has a cooldown. So what difference does it make, you know? <sighs> Alright, so the final fight isn't really much of a fight at all. Mostly it's just uh, all these Dehawks dying and then these two Dryads getting raped and a level 6 Panda running around. And if you look how fast griffins kill uh, bears, it's like one wave of attacks kills a bear. So, Sassy says GG, game's over. Level 7 panda can't beat that army. Griffins do too, have too much DPS and mortars. I mean, while you would probably rape the mortars, it doesn't really matter. He could staff out a lot of them, and it wouldn't matter. Okay. So, that was my Human vs. Night Elf audio commentary. And... I don't know, it was alright. It was sort of improvisational. I only watched the replay like one time. I just sort of uh, gave some good tips and just gave a little perspective. I mean, it's my worst matchup. It's definitely, I'm like 20% versus like equal skilled Night Elves. It's very hard for me to win that matchup. And I guess I, I felt like a good reason to do an audio on it was to help reinforce what I know about the matchup. And that way, like, I mean, because I, I break my own rules. Like, even because I'll be like, don't do this, that's bad in an audio. Doesn't mean I don't always doesn't mean I don't always make the mistake. So by doing audios it's a good way for me to reinforce my uh, knowledge of the matchup. And I think that game demonstrated a good alternative strategy if you're getting owned going tier two, demonstrated a great alternative strategy to beating those night elves. So with all that being said, I'd like to give a shout out to Vex Marquis, Super Cumulo, Papa Smurf, um, Hobgoblin, because he like posted in my my like staff profile, because he's Gosu like that, I guess. Uh, yeah. So that's about all there is for now. This will be Joe Seki signing out.